How soon we forget these scenes. Remember the Iranian Revolution of 1979 and 52 American hostages held by Islamic militants for 444 days? President Jimmy Carter's missteps may have contributed to his re-election loss. The hostages were released the day Ronald Reagan was sworn in as 40th president of the United States. That's because the Ayatollah Khomeini didn't want to risk the wrath of a new, stronger American president. Now, fast forward 35 years later. Barack Obama and John Kerry reached a deal with Iran. The Islamic Republic promised to limit its nuclear program in return for the lifting of economic sanctions and the return of billions of dollars frozen in overseas bank accounts. The Obama administration said it wasn't a treaty, just an agreement. But it sure seemed like a treaty and should have been voted on as such by the U.S. Senate. But Obama knew he couldn't muster the two-thirds required by law to gain approval. Opponents of the nuclear deal said the billions of dollars that Iran would receive would be used to support terrorism around the world. And Iran couldn't be trusted to keep its promises. The Obama administration argued the Iranians could be trusted. The agreement would only benefit America and the Iranian people. Really? I don't think Iranians are marching in the streets today because they've reaped the benefits of the nuclear deal. They're protesting a poor economy. Unemployment is close to 13 percent. Inflation is more than 9 percent. They're also demonstrating against political corruption. Where are those billions the country has received since that nuclear deal was signed? Likely in government leader bank accounts, also used for Iran's proxy wars in Syria and Yemen. And many Iranians have simply just grown tired of the Ayatollahs and that Islamic theocracy. More and more Iranian women are joining protests against the warring of the hijab. President Trump took to Twitter in support of those peaceful protests, but he received immediate criticism from some former Obama administration officials who preferred he just shut up when it comes to Iran and the protests. After all, we wouldn't want to anger the Ayatollah, would we? But Obama administration's silence and a lack of support contributed to the failure of Iran's Green Revolution in 2009. Remember that one? More than 100 people were killed, maybe as many as 10,000 people arrested. These protests are smaller in scale, but they do demonstrate the growing upset and displeasure of the Iranian people. The government's response reveals the failure of the Iran nuclear deal and the true nature of the Iranian regime. Will the demonstrations bring about an end to the Islamic Republic? No, but the United States has a fleeting opportunity to increase the pressure on the Iranian leadership. Later this month, President Trump must decide if the United States will reimpose sanctions against Iran. He's already decertified Iranian compliance with the deal. He's likely to reimpose sanctions. The political unrest in Iran and the government's response, 20 people killed, hundreds of others likely arrested, gives Trump the justification he needs to drive another dagger into the heart of an agreement that he calls the worst deal ever negotiated by the United States. Nuclear deal or no nuclear deal, the USA must continue to take a stand for freedom and support those who risk arrest and even their lives for liberty. Jesus told us in his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, that we are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So let's keep working for liberty, speaking out, doing the right thing, and shining our light of freedom for all the world to see. Well, that's it from the Global Lane this week. Until next time, be blessed.